are back on set here from Dell Technologies World 2018, alongside Ideal IMJB, and we have a very special guest with us, David Rosenberg, CEO and co-founder of Aero Farms, who we all got to hear about this morning from uh, Michael Dell. It's not a bad introduction about that in terms of the project that's going on. Um, as one of its founders, what is Aero Farms about, really? And what's its mission from your point of view? Aero Farms, we're a technology company and a farming company. Okay. And it's hard to do one thing well, we have to do two things well. <laughs> two huge things. Yeah, and, it's, and they're both really interconnected. Okay. So the farming enables us to see problems fast, correct them, and essentially be a better technology company. Mm -hmm. And we are the world leader in our space. We're a vertical farming company. And as the world leader, we can't really go left and right to acquire technology as much as we want. We have to be inventing. So we are innovating, and that's where we're a technology company. And that's where the relationship with Dell, just to jump in, is so vital. Yeah. Because the data science of it all really marries the plant biology and what's going on environmentally, mechanically, and allows us to innovate that much faster. Yeah. Awesome. So you mentioned vertical farming. Let's, let's dig down a little bit. Why is vertical farming so important, especially in this day and age? So if you look at the macro trends, we have population growth. By the UN's estimate, we need 60% more food to feed our population by 2050. We've lost 30% of our arable land in the last 40 years. Mm. 70% of our freshwater goes to agriculture. 70% of our freshwater contamination comes from agriculture. In the space we specialize in, which is leafy green growing, mm -hmm. think salads, 60% of what comes off a farm spoils after it gets off the farm. So there's tremendous inefficiencies, inefficiencies yeah. in the supply chain. So we enable local food production at scale. We could do that using as much as 95% less water zero pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, wow. and our productivity is anywhere between 100 to 300, to um, close to 400 times the productivity versus a field farmer depending on the geography. So we grow massive amounts of food in a very small footprint, enabling local food production at scale. So uh, you, you talk about how you came to Dell Technologies at that partnership is really working out pretty well. What was the initial, what was the challenge that needed to be solved initially? What were you staring at that went, man, this isn't gonna work? So if, if you internalize like what our journey started as, we're trying to figure out what a plant wants outside in the field and how to replicate that and give the plant what, what temperature, humidity, pH, nutrients, micronutrients, spectrum, everything it wants. We grow in a warehouse as opposed to a greenhouse. Right. So we, we simulate all of that, and we have to understand what it is. And when we started, not surprisingly, the plants didn't grow well. <laughs> they didn't taste good. Which is not great for a farm industry. That makes it a tough business model. <laughs> Let's sell really bad food the, at a very high price. Yes. So we learned very quickly how to grow great tasting food at an affordable price. So today we sell product that's arguably the best salads people have ever had. Mm -hmm. We sell it under a brand called Dream Greens and ShopRite's, Whole Foods, Fresh Directs to top chefs in the world. And we use the data science, the data analytics to really understand what the plants want, when they want it, how they want it. If you think of us as human beings, we eat differently, sleep differently, exercise differently, that impacts our biochemistry. Sure. In the same way, we give plants different nutrients, micronutrients, different sleep periods, different exercise regimes, and I could go into more, to impact their phytochemistry. And ultimately, we find out how to grow good plants. But it wasn't until we started tracking the data, mm -hmm. until we started making sense of all this noise. It, it started off, let's just track data for data's sake, and eventually the pieces of the puzzle would start coming in together, and they did. We have a ton of really bright people. We work with other really bright people, data scientists, to try and understand what the plants want, and, and we perform a lot of experimentation. And when I say experimentation, I mean, give it a little more iron, give it a little more zinc, give it a little uh -huh. more temperature, a little more pH, all these, environmental impacts, inputs, and it changes the plants. And, that, and, and that's what's amazing. magical about this is, as you said, you didn't start off successful, but what you've been continuously going through is cycles of improvement. And being able to apply technology 
with machine learning models to optimize for certain nutrients or certain characteristics like color and shape and size um, is just fascinating, right? That's, that's truly what digital transformation is about, is changing how fast you can grow these things. Um, and you guys have a, a much shorter cycle, growth cycle as well, compared to traditional farming. Talk about that. Yeah. So everything we do, we're trying to optimize plant growth. So today, we grow a plant in 15 days that otherwise takes 45 days. Or in some cases, usually around 45 days. And yeah. we do it by, think of like when you're at your uh, growth spurt growing up, if you ate differently, slept differently, you'd grow faster, stronger. We do that for the plants. And we're able to essentially get 23 crop turns a year, what otherwise is three in the field in the salad bowl of the US in California because we eliminate the seasonality because it's fully controlled agriculture. With far less waste and far less water use and zero pesticides. Correct, and on all of these, and it's easy to say, it was a really hard journey, and the journey's really just begun. I mean, today it's kale, arugula, watercress, mm -hmm. and tomorrow it's other crops. And this is not only doing more with less, whether it's less water or no pesticides, it's also growing more product and growing, bring back heirloom varieties, mm -hmm. celebrate diversity, celebrate abundance, and do this with more and more very different types of crops. Well, uh, you allude to it there, we're gonna hear a lot more throughout the week of realizing 2030. You talked about 2050, what the UN anticipates is needed for food, for the population growth. Where do you see Aero Farms in five, 10, 20 years? We're going to have a bigger and bigger impact, both geographically, we're building farms, whether it's Asia, the Middle East, Europe. We're going to grow more and more crops. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I think we're going, to, we're going to inspire a whole lot of innovation going to agriculture. Yep. People realize this industry is challenged. We need a new paradigm of how we feed our planet. And we are illustrative of what data science can mean to a new industry to do things that haven't been done before, whether it's growing plants without sun, without soil, mm -hmm. or whether it's solving other problems in the field. At the end of the day, we have to look at this holistically. And the solutions are gonna be in the field, they're gonna be in greenhouses, and they are gonna be in vertical farms and warehouses. That's, Remarkable. that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mark Oshima did a session on digital transformation around Aero Farms' journey. And the thing that really came out at me was how you guys are a mission-led company and the revitalization of warehouses and abandoned buildings and steel mills. Um, talk to me about how the community building aspect is part of Air Farm's mission. Well, from the mission driven, and, and the best part is the people. So we are attracting some great people to our journey. And it started off with the desire of impacting water in a positive way. So 70% of our fresh water goes to ag, 70% of our freshwater contamination comes from ag. And here, if we could produce food that uses a lot less water. So that was the genesis of it. Mm -hmm. Then appreciating, let's build a company that has a great impact on the environment, also a great impact on society, and a great impact on shareholder profitability, because ultimately that means we could scale. On the societal side, it also helped lead to the focus of leafy greens, the most nutritionally dense food, yep. food group. Watercress, kale, one and two, superfoods. On the impact on the in, on this community standpoint there's a, a cost from a real estate standpoint so there's a business element here we don't build these on fifth avenue we go to the others the like other economically cheaper areas and and those are tougher areas also appreciating there's a big problem of access to fresh food yeah. in the u.s so it's what's called like a food desert so here if we could help solve a couple of problems, help alleviate a food desert, which is impactful. We also, working in an underserved community, we help add jobs. But the most the impactful part is inspiration. We are bringing this incredible innovation. We're bringing technology partners to these communities and giving the people of the, like for us, the, our headquarters are in Newark, New Jersey, for example, yep. and giving the people of Newark something to be excited and feel proud about for their community of having this, all this innovation all these amazing partnerships coming to their city is wonderful. Uh, it's remarkable to hear this story of idea, execution, planning, uh, multi-level win across the board for different groups, all stemming out of the idea to solve one problem. And then as we do that, as you disrupt 
an agricultural industry which has been pretty non-disruptable for quite some time. Basically there was earth, there was growing stuff in the earth, there was harvesting that. To say we can alter that with an idea and with technology and then loop that into a social change, I mean that's profoundly transformative across the board. Uh, it, is it as exciting as it seems before we take a break? I just got to know, because it seems like it's a great place to be. It's, ex it's incredibly exciting. At the same time, when you're in it and you're farming every day, <laughs> there's an appreciation of how much further we have to go. Right. So this journey has really be just begun. Frankly, the journey with Dell Technologies has just begun. We have a, a common vision of what the fully integrated farm is. Yep. Working with the team at Dell, they're helping us sharpen our pencil and working with us strategically, not just tactically, of how do we evolve that vision, what does it really mean, and we're just going to get better. Uh, that's remarkable, a tremendous story. Congratulations on all that, David. Thanks for being with us. Absolute delight having you here uh, for a deal. I'm JB, a short break. We're going to sort of consume a lot of those ideas that we just harvested from David, and we'll be back after this.